What is going on everyone? Today we are going to be doing an install and review of the Bouge RV roof rail crossbars for your Jeep Grand Cherokee WK2. The WK2 is this body style right here. It went from 2011 to 2021. There might be some 2022s in there, but basically up until 2021. These particular crossbars are gonna be for the roofs that have just the plastic molding here. You'll see there's zero metal involved here. I just have a uh, Laredo X and it has the plastic roof rails. Uh, that's what these ones are for. They will not work with the metal roof rails. If you do have the metal roof rails, Bouge RV does make another kit that does work with them. But these ones specifically are gonna be for the plastic roof railed WK2 Jeep Grand Cherokee. So this kit includes the crossbars themselves, instructions, a couple of hardware Allen bolts, a few aluminum spacers, the keys to remove the end caps, and a multi-tool here. It's an Allen wrench. You can use it either this end or this end. So first thing we need to do is these are the suggested locations. You can pick different locations, but as they show here, they want the front crossbar to be on the second from the front bolt, and then the rear one, they want to be the second from the rear bolt. So that's how I have it set up on the Jeep here. You'll see there's the first bolt, and then the second one is right there. That's where I have the crossbar on the front one. And then the rear one, here's the first bolt. Second one is right underneath here. So this is their recommended position. You can adjust it if you need to, but that's what they recommend. If there's still some shipping plastic on your locks here, go ahead and peel that off. If it's blue, there's some sort of adhesive over it. You'll want to peel that off just like that. And so once you've identified all your hardware and everything, the first thing you're going to do is grab your key, insert it at each end cap. So there's going to be four total. You're going to use the key, put it in there, rotate counterclockwise, quarter of a turn. Once you do that, you'll be able to just kind of lift the piece off. We need to do this because there's going to be a bolt that goes right here to bolt this down. So you're gonna go ahead, use the key, and remove all four end caps, as I've shown here. You can then rotate the key back clockwise and pull it out. So as you see now, I have all four of them removed. The next step is identifying your crossbar. On the bottom of each crossbar, you'll see this one is marked front. So that's the one that's gonna to go towards the front of the vehicle. And then on the very top, there's an arrow that points forward. So if we know that that arrow has to face forward, and we know that this is the front rail, it can only go like this. The rear crossbar is very much the same. As you'll see on the end here, it says forward. So the arrow has to face towards the front of the Jeep. And on the bottom side, it says rear. So it can only go one way. It will go like this. Once we've identified the front and rear rails, we can go ahead and fine tune them. We'll use the provided Allen key wrench and go ahead and just loosen. You don't have to fully take them out, but just loosen the two Allen head screws at each end. So you have two there, two there, and then same on this rail, two there and two there. So a total of eight, just loosen them up enough to where you can slide the end of the crossbar. So now that we've made it this far, remember we're gonna go ahead and install the front crossbar on the second from the front bolt and the rear one, the second from the rear. So we need to remove those factory bolts. Now, the instructions say to go ahead and use the provided Allen key to remove it. Technically, the bolts on mine, and it may vary by year and model, mine are technically a T30 Torx bit. However, if you use the Allen key provided in the kit, it does grab enough to remove said T30 Torx bolts. So uh, if you're having problems removing it with this, use a T30 Torx on these. Again, it may vary by year and model, but that's what mine are. However, this Allen key did work. Once the factory hardware is removed, go ahead and set those aside. You will not need them for the crossbars. However, if you wanna remove your crossbars, I recommend installing these bolts again. For instance, we're coming into the snowy season right now. I'm not really gonna be hauling my kayak or anything with the crossbars. Therefore, I'll probably remove them so that it's easier to brush snow off the roof. And therefore, I'll put these back in, take the crossbars off for winter, put them back on in the spring. Now in the four spots that we removed the factory hardware, we're gonna take the provided Bouge RV aluminum spacers, just place it kind of right here 
in the little tray. There is some movement, but you'll want it lined up with the bolt hole itself. Just kind of set it in there for now. Do that at all four corners. All right, so hopefully there you can see we have the one aluminum spacer there. Got the second one there. Again, we have the rear cross rail with the arrow that says forward. So it's gonna go like this. And like I mentioned earlier, I've already loosened the Allen bolts underneath here so we can slide this closer and further away as needed. We wanna line this up with the spacer and then use the supplied Allen bolts to anchor each end. So you should have four supplied Allen bolts with four supplied washers. You put one washer on each Allen bolt. Go ahead, put it in the mounting hole here and you will line that up with your spacer, which you will then line up with the factory hole in the roof. Start it by finger first, then switch to the Allen tool. So once they're lined up, you wanna start them by finger. You don't wanna force it. You don't wanna cross thread anything. And then you'll use provided Allen tool to cinch them down. You don't have to completely reef on them, but you do want them snug. You'll kind of just feel them bottom out. And then I give them just a little extra quarter turn, something like that. And then give them a little test. They shouldn't really slide front to back once they're secure. So once you have all four Allen bolts tightened down and you're sure that both crossbars are secured, you'll take each end cap, you put the key in, rotate it counterclockwise so the key is sideways like this, and we're going to focus on getting the three top tabs in first, just like this. Once those are in, then we'll push in on the bottom, rotate the key clockwise, pull it out, and it should be a nice flush fit here, and that'll hold everything together. Keeps people from stealing your crossbars and also keeps them secured to the vehicle at the same time. We will repeat those same steps for the other three corners. As you see, it's very quick once you get the hang of it. <laughs> so there we go, we have both crossbars installed. All four are secured with the Allen bolts and washers provided in the kit with the necessary spacers. Got all four locks in place. They're nice and flush. They're mounted securely. Once you have the locks installed and everything tight, don't forget to go underneath and tighten the two Allen bolts on each corner. So there's gonna be eight total. Cinch them up with the provided Allen key here. You'll hold it sideways like this. I recommend putting a paper towel or a rag down on the roof so you don't scratch your paint while you're doing this, but don't forget to tighten those up. So to make things easier tightening these screws, I recommend you only back them off one or two turns initially, just enough to slide these. That way you're not having to turn them and tighten them as much to get them snug. But once you get it kind of snug, uh, as you'll see, there's kind of a long lever you got here. You'll just kind of go until it's snug. And again, just like you did with the Allen bolts, maybe another quarter to half turn after snug and that's it. And then repeat the same step with the bolt right next to it. Do that on each corner. And the good news about tightening these bottom Allen ones, even though they're kind of a pain to do just because of the clearance that you have, once you snug them down, you shouldn't have to adjust them again. Even if you take the crossbars off the Jeep, you just take the locking key, twist and remove this cap, and you'll use the Allen tool to remove the four bolts, one on each corner, and you'll just lift the rail off. You won't have to mess with the Allens on the bottom here. That's just the one-time adjustment to get them fine-tuned for the total width of the vehicle. Uh, once you set it to your specific vehicle and you take them off, put them back on the same vehicle, you won't have to mess with that again. As you'll see everything put together, it's actually pretty sturdy. And they don't slide front to back at all, once secure. Now we're ready to take this thing on a test drive. We'll just see uh, if there's any noise going down the highway, just so you guys have an idea. I know sometimes certain brands or certain sizes on certain vehicles will make like a whistling or a humming noise. So just for those of you curious, if you're gonna try and run these all the time, if there's any extra noise, we'll do that real quick. So here we are at 80 miles an hour, which is well over interstate speed. And honestly, I hear a little bit more wind noise than normal. But there's no weird whistling or anything. I'm, I'm very happy with how quiet these crossbars are. 
So that is gonna do it for the Bouge RV crossbars on the Jeep Grand Cherokee WK2, guys. Again, I will put the product link down below in the video description if you wanna buy yours online. Subscribe and hit the bell for more videos like this. Make sure you hit the like button if this video helped you out. Check me out on all my socials. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.